And then Allah says, as a punishment, this is the punishment from Allah when people hear the word of Allah and they don't care, then Allah puts the love of filthy things in their heart. He says, You know, they ended up loving the worship of a cow and they were obsessed with it. Where did that filthy love come from? It's shirk. You're a Muslim. How could you do shirk like that? That's the punishment of hearing the word of Allah after being shaken up and still dismissing it. Well, you want to dismiss it, then Allah does not reside in your heart. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم مثل الذين حملوا التوراة ثم لم يحملوها كمثل الحمار يحمل أسفارا بكس مثل القوم الذين كذبوا بآيات الله والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين رب الشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقلة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه اجمعين Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We begin our study of ayah number five. Uh, I'll translate the ayah first. It's a difficult ayah to translate. Might come across as offensive, but as we navigate through it, inshallah, we'll understand it uh, better and better. The example of those who were given the responsibility of the Torah, who were, who were loaded with the responsibility of the Torah. ثم لم يحملوها, then they did not uphold it, meaning they didn't live up to the responsibility of the Torah. كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَارَ is the example of the donkey that is carrying books, that is carrying volumes of books. بِئْسَ مَثَلُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ What a terrible example it is of the group of people or the kind of nation who lied against the revelations of Allah or the signs of Allah, the miraculous signs of Allah. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَحْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ and Allah, in fact, does not guide the wrongdoing nation. That's the it's a, it's a longer ayah, but it is a an ayah about the Israelites. Clearly, we're going to take it bit by bit and try and understand it and some of its biblical subtext. So the first thing is the word mathal. Uh, mathal. All you need to know about it, simply speaking, is timthal was used for a sculpture, like you know when you have a great leader and they build a statue that's supposed to look like that leader. So it's supposed to be an a copy of the person that it's representing. So you see that statue, but you're actually thinking of the person that it represents. From it came the idea of misal. Misal is commonly translated as an example. And the idea of an example is, I'm talking about this concept, but it's directly taking you back to the reality of the situation. Right? Just like a statue is taking you back in your mind to the real person, the example is taking you back for, to the concept at hand. Right? So the, the fact that masal is being used has to have a purpose. It always takes you back to something real. Who's trying something? I don't know. Who's that? Okay, anyway. Don't work on it. They're good people. Alhamdulillah. So, the purpose of method is to help students with the lesson at hand. Meaning, if Allah starts the ayah with the word method, it must mean there's already an example, a concept that's there, and this is going to help us understand why this example is being used. Like for example, when you study any subject, if you're a student of mathematics and there's a concept that's being explained, right after the concept, here are the following examples, right? And then solve the following problems, right? So they'll give you a couple of examples that they've solved for you and then you have to figure out the rest to solve yourself, right? Same way when I teach any subject, if I'm teaching Arabic, for example, a grammar concept, I'll give a couple of examples of it, then you can solve your own problems, right? So. The idea of mathal here necessarily connects to what came before. And that's really, really important. The ayah right before said, you know, uh, that Allah has favored us. Thalika fadlullah. That is the favor of Allah. He gives it to whoever he wants. And in the very next ayah, Allah is talking about the Israelites. Why? Because the Israelites were favored by Allah already. Multiple places in the Quran, Allah says, I favored you over all other nations. We favored them knowingly over other, other nations and gave them all kinds of ayat in which there were great tests and great blessings. This is what he says about the Israelites. So he just mentioned us getting fadl and then he mentions the nation that used to have the fadl. As an example, why? Because now that you're, you're stepping up, 
you know, like uh, uh, to give you a, a baseball analogy, when when somebody's up to bat, it's their turn, right? But before you go up to bat, let me give you the example of the last guy who was in your place. Here's the mistake they made. The purpose of it is you are now standing in the exact place that the Israelites were standing, which means you are in potential danger of making the same mistakes that they made. That's the point that's being made. And this, this mindset really helps us appreciate <coughs> why the word, uh, you know, the first word that's going to get used after mathal is hummilu. Mathalu lazina hummilu at tawrata The example of those who were given the burden, who were burdened or loaded with the Torah. The Prophet ﷺ is told, إِنَّ سَنُلْكِ عَلَيْكَ قَوْلًا ثَقِيلًا We are putting a heavy word on you. The Qur'an is described as a heavy word. What did we just learn about the Torah? They were given the burden of the Torah. What does Allah say about the Qur'an? It is a heavy word put on the Prophet ﷺ. We ask Allah at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, after learning about the Israelites in detail, at the end of it we say, رَبَّنَا لَا تَحْمِدْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْلًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا Ya Allah, do not place a burden on us like you placed on those who came before us. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَاقَةَ لَنَا بِهِ Our Master, do not put a burden on us that we have no power to bear. So the word burden is now associated with the responsibility of carrying revelation. We saw in the second ayah, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَنْدِمُهُمْ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And in the next ayah, Allah described this as a fadl. This is a favor of Allah that you get to have the Qur'an. Now there's the other side. It's a privilege, fadl, it's a privilege, but it's also a massive burden, a massive responsibility. And that's two sides of something. Like for example, this, this takes us back also to Al-Malik and Al-Aziz, when the king appoint someone as the advisor. Isn't that a huge privilege? But it's at the same time a huge responsibility. Right? So the, the positions that have the highest privilege also come with the highest responsibility. We respect people in high positions. Actually, we respect them because they have to carry high responsibilities. That's what makes them respectable. You see? So your teacher is respected because he has higher responsibility. The principal is more respected. The dean of the university is even more respected because they're carrying higher and higher responsibilities. Now, we are privileged to have the Qur'an and we have the responsibility, of bur the burden of carrying the Qur'an. So it's important that now that you have this privilege, congratulations, that's the fadl of Allah, now you better watch out because this privilege will go away the moment you no longer carry your responsibility. Like any job, you can have the most prestigious job, but the moment you don't do justice with your job, you get humiliated. You could have the job of the president, a really prestigious job, and then you're corrupt in your role, and you're the most humiliated person in the country, because you misuse that role. So now that Muslims are in this position, they need to know what happened to people who were privileged before you, and they lost that privilege. You don't want to fall into this position. Look at these other ayat in the Qur'an, that similarly allude to this concept. قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولُ Tell them, obey Allah and the Messenger. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّ لَا عَلَيْهِ مَا حُمِّلَا If they turn away then, then you, then, then you, عَلَيْهِ مَا حُمِّلَا The Messenger is only responsible for the burden that was placed on him. وَعَلَيْكُمْ مَا حُمِّلْتُمْ And you are only responsible for the burden that was placed on you. وَإِن تُطِعُوهُ تَهْتَدُوا And if you were to follow him, you will be committed to guidance. وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ The only obligation the messenger has is to communicate clearly. Another ayah in the Qur'an, actually this is, this is a scary one, but I'm gonna, you know what, let me just tell it to you now. إِنَّ عَرَضْنَا الْأَمَانَةَ عَلَى السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ فَأَبَيْنَا أَنْ يَحْبِلْنَهَا We offered the, the, the trust to the skies and the earth and the mountains and they all refused to carry the burden. They all they, they refused to carry the, the trust. The trust is actually the choice to do right and wrong in Surah Al-Ahzab. And Allah is saying the choice to do right and wrong was human beings were privileged with high intellect. They were privileged with the soul, the ruh that Allah blew inside them. And as a result, they have more power to make right choices than any other creature. So when this power, this trust, that I'll let you make whatever choice you want, when this trust was being handed to any other creation, they could not hold it. 
but the human being decided to hold it. And in the next ayah, Allah says, لِيُعَذِّبَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ وَالْمُشْرِكَاتِ And it so ended up happening that Allah will end up punishing the hypocrites of the men and the women and the mushrikeen, men and women. Who was mentioned first? Mushrikun or hypocrites? Hypocrites are people who accept the responsibility, who have, who accept the religion, and then play games with the religion. Those are the hypocrites. They were put on the responsibility first because they actually consciously took the responsibility. Anyway, so that's a little bit about the, the, the notion of carrying the responsibility, those who were given the load of carrying the Torah. Before we go on, we should also learn some things about the word Torah. The word Torah comes from the Hebrew language and it is pronounced as Torah. It is usually translated as law or instruction and is considered as the most sacred text in Judaism. The Torah consists of the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and includes God's instructions, guidance, and teachings for the Jewish people. So generally speaking, the Torah refers to the Old Testament, the five books of the Old Testament. Okay? In Hebrew, it is from the root ya ra ha which is similar to Arabic, wari, uh, actually, uh, which has the primary meaning throw or shoot. In the derived uh, haifal form, af'ala form, the verb means to teach, to throw knowledge towards someone else. So from the, that now, from that, the noun Torah means direction or instruction. So actually Torah literally means instruction or law or direction. Okay? That's what the word comes from. Now, so Allah says, now let me give you an example. This is just an example. This is not what the Quran says. I just want to explain a point to you. Those who were charged with the Quran then didn't uphold it. If I say that, those who were charged with the Quran and didn't uphold it, is that a comment about all of those who were charged with the Quran or some of those who were charged with the Quran? Huh? If you say all, then it means none of them upheld it. If you say those who were charged with the Quran and didn't uphold it, only these people. So when Allah says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا التَّوْرَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا The example of those who were charged with the Torah and didn't uphold it, is that all the Jews or some of the Jews? Do you understand the point? There are those who were given the Torah that upheld it. Allah talks about them. There were, there were those that were given the Torah that lived by it and died by it. And there are heroes. They're talked about in the Quran too. This example, see what happens sometimes is, People want to find, oh, the Qur'an is anti-Semitic, or the Qur'an is anti-Jewish. Actually, it's pretty pro-Jewish. More Jewish prophets are mentioned, more Israelite prophets are mentioned than any other nation's prophets in the Qur'an. Musa a.s. is mentioned over 70 times in the Qur'an, right? The, and, and one of the noble prophets that even our prophet is supposed to take inspiration from. But the most important piece here is, Allah does not only criticize the Jews, and He does not only praise the Jews, and he does not only, there's no only, there's in specific cases, specific case studies are mentioned. This is a case study of those who were charged with the Torah and didn't live up to it. Now, let's understand what does it mean to be charged with the Torah. It actually means those who studied it, those who learned it, the scholars among them. And again, not all scholars among them, some scholars among them who after having learned it, did not live up to it. They did not live up to it. Hummila also is a passive verb, which I'll explain in a second. Now, I, what I, because this is, there's a lot of work to do today on this, I want to first get through our understanding. How does the Qur'an explain this concept? When he says, they didn't live up to the Torah, they didn't carry it. Well, how does he explain that they didn't carry it? I'm going to go through a number of ayat. This is not comprehensive, but it should give you a pretty decent idea. But what I want you to keep in your mind is the first thing I said. Why is this example being given? For whose benefit? Ours. So every, every mistake of theirs is potentially whose mistake? Is ours. We have to have a really good look at ourselves as we read this. First, فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا uh, The worst pits of hell are for those who wrote the law with their own hands and then said, this is from Allah. So they can make some small pathetic profit from it. They toyed with the law of Allah. Then terrible hell is for them because of what their hands wrote. And terrible hell is for them 
because of what they keep on earning. So the first thing is to come up with laws and fatwas and rulings and then say this is actually from Allah, but do it for corrupt reasons. Not be genuine. وَتَرَى كَثِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ You will see a huge population among them that to make a lot of efforts to spread uh, animosity and sin. They want to spread harm and animosity, hate. وَأَكْلِهِمُ الصُّحْتِ And they want to eat corrupt food, meaning they want to eat from illegitimate means, haram means, through cheating, through lying, through stealing, through robbery. لَبِئْسَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ How terrible their behaviors have been. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ لَيَدُ اللَّهِ مَغْنُولًا وَلَّتَيْدِيهِمْ And and the Jews, some of them said, Allah's hands are tied. Allah's hands are tied. May their hands be tied. وَلُعِنُوا بِمَا قَالُوا And they should be cursed because of what they said. Now what does it mean Allah's hands are tied? Where's Allah? Allah's not doing anything. Why is this happening to us? What? Why is this? Why is hands tied? Where was Allah when I had a car accident? Where was Allah when I lost my job? Where was Allah when this happened in this country and that happened in that country? Where was? What are they trying to say? Allah's hands are what? Tied. Alhamdulillah, we don't do that. Oops. بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَ طَعَانِ No, his hands are outstretched. يُنْفِقُ كَيْفَ يَشَاءُ He spends how he wants. وَلَا يَزِيدَنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ تُغْيَانًا وَكُفْرًا Watch this. And a good number of them, what has been sent to you from your Rabb, makes them even more rebellious and more, more uh, uh, disbelieving. Meaning they get offended by the word of Allah. وَأَلْقَيْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ وَالْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءِ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And we have put animosity and hatred between them for each other until judgment day. كُلَّمَا أَوْقَدُوا نَارًا لِلْحَرْبِ أَطْفَأَهَ اللَّهِ Every time they try to start a new fire of war, Allah puts it out. يَسْعَوْنَا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَسَادًا They make all kinds of efforts to create corruption in the, in the land, in the region. وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And Allah does not love those who cause corruption. وَلَقَدْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ وَأَرْسَلَا إِلَيْهِمْ رُسَلَا They even killed prophets. Allah says, وَكُلَّمَا جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَهْوَى أَنفُسُهُمْ فَرِيقًا كَذَّبُوا وَفَرِيقًا يَقْتُلُونَ Every time a prophet would come to them, telling them, a messenger would come telling them something they don't want to hear, either they called him a liar or they got him killed. Well, we don't have any more prophets after Muhammad wasallam, But we have people that would invite people or educate people about what the prophet taught, what the book of Allah taught. And sometimes we don't want to hear what the book of Allah says. So what did we do with certain people that were saying, this is what Allah says? We would either call them liars, humiliate them, disgrace them, or even get them killed. There were many great scholars of Islamic history that were jailed, beat, tortured, killed, humiliated. And many of them even today, people say lots of lies against them. I'm not afraid to say it. I think Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah is one of the most lied about people in Islamic history. Like even people who like him lie about him. Don't even know. Like there's so much wrong done with certain people in our history and he's one of those people. He's like a, he's one of the Muslimin in Islamic history. Honest to God. And <laughs> there's this, he, he was such a remarkable figure and then later on, the, the worst things were associated with him. And you know how sometimes, I'll give you an analogy, sometimes uh, there's, you go to some people's house, they insult you nicely. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, mashallah, you still have the same job, huh? <laughs> hey, you still driving that Toyota? Cool. Yeah, I remember. Does it still have the same scratches? You know those people who insult you nicely? There's a lot of people who insult the scholars of the past nicely. May Allah reward him, mashallah. And then they'll say all kinds of lies about him. And this, this is, فَلِقًا كَذَّبُوا a group, they, they would kill prophets. They would lie against prophets. We don't, alhamdulillah, there's no more prophets. But the next best thing is the ambassador of the prophets. Who are the ambassadors of the prophets? The scholars. So the ones who, among them who did speak the truth, they, you, you didn't want to hear what they have to say because what happened with the Israelites were they were living under kingdoms. And so their religious hierarchy was associated with the government. So if a scholar came and said something the government didn't want to hear, then he would put the, his payroll scholars to go after the scholar that's not on the payroll and annihilate him. And if that wasn't enough, get him killed. Get rid of him altogether. 
you know, throw them in jail, do this or that. So this is Fariqan Kadhabu or Fariqan Yaqtulun. كَانُوا لَا يَتَنَاهَوْنَ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوهُ This is a scary. They didn't used to stop each other from bad things that they did. They used to just let it happen and just say, what can I do? That's just that's who they are, that's what they do. They wouldn't even say anything bad about it. لَبِئِسَ مَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ What a terrible thing they were doing. Meaning, not only were the bad people doing something bad, the people that were standing and watching were also doing something terrible. Just becoming bystanders. يَا أَيُّ أَلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَسْعُلُوا عَنَا أَشْيَاءَ إِن تُبْدَ لَكُمْ تَسُؤْكُمْ Those of you who have faith, don't ask about things that if you find out about them, you will, they, will hurt, they will hurt you. وَإِن تَسْعُلُوا عَنَا حِيْنَا يُنَزَلُ الْقُرْآنِ تُبْدَ لَكُمْ عَفَ اللَّهُ عَنَا And if you, if you ask about them when the Qur'an is still coming down, they will be made clear to you. Allah has forgiven certain things. Meaning, if Allah didn't talk about something, if Allah didn't say this is halal or this is haram, He didn't discuss the issue. That's not because Allah didn't, didn't remember to discuss the issue. It's because whatever He doesn't mention, He has forgiven. That's what Allah is saying. Allah has already forgiven it. But what, people, what do people want to know? Can you tell me about this? Can you tell me about this? Can you tell me about this? Al- Musa alayhi salam told the people, slaughter a cow. Easy. Slaughter a cow. What are they? No, kind of color cow. How, how big, how tall, how fat, skinny. You know, it's still confusing. And the more questions they asked, the answer became easier or more difficult. So who created the difficulty? Their questions created the difficulty. Their questions created the difficulty. And he says, Allah says, قَدْ سَأَلَهَا قَوْمٌ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ uh, there were people before you that used to ask a lot of questions and, and comp- creating more and more complications and because of it they became disbelievers because of their questions they became disbelievers guys sorry for the interruption in the middle of this lecture just before you continue I want to let you know and encourage you that I want you to sign up for BayanaTV.com and help others sign up or even sponsor students for BayanaTV.com so we can create worldwide communities of students that are studying the meanings and the benefit and the wisdom of the Quran uh, and are inshallah ta'ala spreading that in their own circles thanks so much because of their questions they became disbelievers Fumman, then, so that's one you know it's not like you're not allowed to ask questions. Of course you're allowed to ask questions. But when you're trying to split hairs, you know, and get into nitty-gritty details, details on top of details on top of details, complicating things more than they need to be complicated, you know, then you're just creating, you're making the religion so difficult that you can't even practice it. It'll become impossible. Okay? So now, another disease that they used to have, you were the people. You were the same people who used to kill each other. They were Muslims, killing other Muslims. But then, and then you were killing, you were expelling them, your own people from your own homes. And you were taking over each other's properties. You were making aggressive moves against each other, invading each other's properties, taking each other's th- land and things like that. But... Then, after you fought each other, by the way, when the Muslims fought each other, they became weak. If a family is having fights within itself, the family is weak, which means it's easier to attack from the outside. So when the, when the Israelites fought each other, other nations saw that they're weak. So they started invading them. When they invaded them, many of them became slaves. Then they would have fundraisers, our Muslim brothers are being tortured. Please raise some money so we can free our Muslim brothers. When they come to you as slaves, you go and pay money to rescue them. You want to raise money for that cause. But, kicking them out of their homes in the first place was haram for you. You created a conflict that led them to become this way, and then you want to come and rescue them. This is what the Quran says. The first there was the infighting, and then there was a, oh, help your fellow brother. This, this hypocrisy was created within them. Um, Okay, then أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Do you believe in some parts of the book and just completely reject other parts of the book? فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَا يَفْعَلُوا ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا What could be the payback for someone who does something like that except they should be humiliated in this life? They should live in humiliation. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَى شَدِّ الْعَذَابِ And the day of resurrection, they will be taken back to the worst of punishments. Ooh, this one's scary. وَقَالُوا قُلُوبُنَا غُلْفِ They said, our hearts are wrapped up. Our hearts are safe, no matter what. 
As bad as I am, I still have Iman in my heart. It doesn't matter how... Okay, yeah, this is haram, this is haram, this is... I do a lot of haram, but I'm a good person. In my heart, I'm still a good person. You should know that. Don't judge my heart. My heart is still good. Qulubuna ghulf. Allah says, بَلْدَعَلَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِكُفْرِهِمْ Allah cursed them because of their denial. فَقَلِيلَ مَا يُؤْمِنُونَ How little they have faith. This, this way of saying, yeah, 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 it's shot. You're right, I do a lot of bad things, but I'm not that bad because deep down inside, deep down, really deep down. وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ كِتَابٌ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَهُمْ And when they, they would make predictions of the future, that when, when the final prophet comes, you will see, oh, it's going to be awesome, we're going to win. Ah, oh, that sounds familiar. When the signs of judgment take come, then the Muslims are going to... Right now though, my heart's in a good place. Okay. Allah says to them, listen. He holds the mountain above them, he scares them, and says, hold on to what I'm giving you with might. Wasba'u, listen. They say, we heard and we, we disobeyed. You know what this is? Let me tell you. Sometimes Allah scares people. He, he puts them in a very scary situation. And in that scary situation, they realize they must obey Allah. And soon after that scary situation, when the scary situation is gone, what happens to those people? They go, oh. Allah's not mad anymore. I think I can go back to normal now. Like Allah gives the, the analogy of even non-believers, you know, when they're traveling by sea and the, the, the sea becomes turbulent, and they all start remembering Allah. Right? If you're on a plane and the, the malakul maut mask falls, Right. <laughs> uh, oops, sorry. The pilot fell asleep. You can put the medical mode mask back up. Okay, well, I'll go back to Netflix then. <laughs> right? So there's a... And the idea here is actually even more than that. They were shaken up and they were told, listen to what we are giving you seriously. And hold on to it. And they said, we hear, but later on, even though they heard it, they still disobeyed. And then Allah says, as a punishment, this is the punishment from Allah, when people hear the word of Allah, and they don't care, that Allah puts the love of filthy things in their heart. He says, You know, they ended up loving the worship of a cow, and they were obsessed with it. Where did that filthy love come from? It's shirk. You're a Muslim. How could you do shirk like that? That's the punishment of hearing the word of Allah after being shaken up and still dismissing it. Well, you want to dismiss it, then Allah does not reside in your heart. Then you, He'll allow that heart to be flooded with all kinds of shit and creepy, weird practices. And you'll find, I don't have to spell this out to you, but there's, not, there's no shortage of weird, shirky, total idol worship type practices across the Muslim world. Total idol worship type, like crazy. And they call themselves Muslim. And they do the most like non-Muslim things openly. Promise breaking. Every time they made any promise, they threw it away. They couldn't keep any promises. I learned this the hard way in Pakistan. I thought things would get better. You know what I learned in Pakistan? When somebody says, Don't worry about it at all. Done. Taken care of. That's when you should worry. When the guy says, Aap fikri na kare ho gaya bas. Oh my God. The more guarantees, the more guarantees, the more lies. Why? Why? Allah says, every time they made any promise, they threw it behind their back. I was speaking to a, a senior in Pakistan, an intellectual, became a friend of mine. I love making friends with elders. They're just so wise. And he said, you know what our problem is in our country? We're just in the habit of lying about the smallest things. We just have to lie. We don't even have, there's no reason. We still do it. We still do it. You're like, you're, 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 uh, your friend is waiting for you at the, at the door, right? And he calls you and says, you coming? And you could say, I need five minutes. You say, no, no, I'm already down the stairs. I'm right there, bro. I'm right there. Just 10 seconds. 10 minutes later. Right? There's, there was no reason to lie, but you still... You still have to do it, you know. Hey, have you finished the uh, the, the the assignment that I gave you? Alhamdulillah. 
As unrelated, alhamdulillah, it wasn't related to what you said. I was just saying, praise belongs to Allah. <laughs> then here's the other scary one. لَتَجِدَنَّهُمْ أَحْرَصَ النَّاسِ عَلَىٰ حَيَاتٍ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا You will find, it was said about the Israelites, you will find them the most desiring of living. They just want to live. They just don't want to die. Even more than the people who do shirk. Each one of them wants to live a thousand years. You know how, this is a new one. I didn't think this would happen to us, but a lot of people, Muslims come up to me, young and old. I have a real fear of dying. I just don't want to die. Why did Allah create death? I have nightmares about dying. Why are you afraid of dying? We came from Allah. We returned back to Allah. This is an episode of our life. This is not the end of our life. I met a doctor who told me, he, he deals with patients that are on the verge of death. You know? And sometimes he has to tell the family he only has a month left. He has two weeks left. You know, if, the, if you'd like to take him off the machine and take them home or whatever, take them off dialysis, or etc., et then it's your choice. And he says, man, I deal with atheist families, Jewish families, Christian families, Hindu families. I deal with all kinds of Muslim families. And the only families to say, no, 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 he cannot die. He cannot die. Keep him on the machine. I know his brain's not working anymore. But no, 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 that cannot be. We cannot have him die. The only families that do that are the Muslim families. Everybody else says he had a good life. The atheist says, I had a good life. Let me go in peace. They have no problem. The Hindu says, okay, he'll come back. Karma, he'll come back. Or Teletubby or whatever, he'll come back. The one, the only people now that cannot accept the notion of death. How could this happen? How could death happen? No, no, no. They're still alive. They can't go. They can't go. And they can't accept it over and over again. The Muslims. You know what Allah did with us? We... We don't hand the body over to a cremation company so they can deal with it or to a company that embalms the body or who washes the body? The family members. Who puts the coffin on the body? The family members. Traditionally, who put the body in the grave? The family. Why? Because Allah is, this religion teaches you to deal with death, not run from it, to deal with it. The Israelites developed a terrible fear of death. Terrible fear of death. Now it's reminding me of a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he said that people are going to eat from us like wolves, tear up a sheep. And he said, what's the, when he was asked, mal, 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 ja, well, how, how are we going to get out of this? He said, remember death a lot. Right? And that's some people look at that and say, why should I remember death a lot? This is depressing. The point of that hadith is people will become so obsessed with what? Life that they don't want to accept the reality of death. It's not that you should wake up and say, I'm going to die. Breakfast, I'm going to die. Lunch, I'm going to die. It's like, that's not what's being said. It's just that you're so engulfed in life that you're denying the reality of death. You're denying that this life is a journey. And this was something that they before us, you know, وَمَا هُوَ بِمُزَحْسِحِهِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ أَنْ يُحَمَّقْ They're not going to be getting away from punishment if it, no longer how much, how long they live. Here's another one that they did. They, they had this problem. Alhamdulillah, we don't have this problem anywhere in the Muslim world. They used to teach people, the angels were sent to teach them magic. And they were told, when you learn magic, this is just a trial. Don't, don't become kafir. If you learn this, you'll become kafir. And they would learn things that would cause them harm. They would especially learn magic that would cause marriages to break up. Or a proposal to not go through. Or this girl should never get married. Or that guy should become sick before his engagement happens. Or th th this is what they, this is where the, the, a lot of the magic industry went with them. Alhamdulillah, we don't, we don't do that. We're good. They couldn't be harming anybody except with this kind of stuff, except by Allah's permission. And they would only learn something that would harm them and not benefit them. And they knew whoever uses any of this or tries to do any of this will have no portion in the Akhirah. What a horrible thing they, they, they sold themselves for. If they only knew. Among the, among the Israelites, the Jews, there are some who remove the word from its place. 
Allah says one thing, they say, no, that's not what it means, this is what it means. That's not what it says, this is what it says. Messing with the words. Now with the Qur'an, we can't change the word of Allah. Right? Here's a creative exercise. Okay, we can't change the words. Let's just tell people, I know this is what it says, but it says X, but what it really means is Y. No, see, I know it says X. I know, I know. I know Allah is the best speaker. He's very clear in his speech. But what this really means is something else. Or, oh, this is what the ayah is, but no, no, no. This ayah, we don't longer follow this ayah. We don't have to follow this ayah. What? يُحَرِّفُونَ الْكَلِمَ عَمَّ وَاضِعِهِ يَقُولُونَ سَمِعْنَا وَعَصَيْنَا And they say, we hear and we disobey. وَاسْمَعَ غَيْرَ مُسْمَعٍ And we hear in a way that shouldn't be heard. وَرَاعِنَا and they رَاعِنَا لَيَّمْ بِأَلْسِنَتِهِ Meaning they twist their tongue and make insults. تَعْنًا فِي الدِّينَ They are sarcastic in the matter of religion. وَقَالُوا أَنَّهُ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَطَعْنَا And if they had only heard and obeyed, وَاسْمَعْ وَانْظُرْنَا And had listened and said, wait for us, لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَأَقْوَمْ They would have been better for them. They, okay, here's the next one. Again, something, alhamdulillah, we are immune. They, he says, أن ينزل he says ما يود الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب ولا المشركين أن ينزل عليكم من خير من ربكم they never want that something good should come to you they hate that something good should come to you والله يختص برحمته من يشاء and the knowledgeable among them hate that you now have revelation meaning they feel like if you have knowledge of revelation then people are not going to come to us they're not going to be impressed with our knowledge now because you have that knowledge So they don't want that for you. Muslims within each other, you know, even in the Islamic space, even in the Islamic space, you, you know, sometimes you can learn something good from someone who knows a lot less than you. Is that possible? Right? And, but you, you, you notice that sometimes there's somebody who knows a lot more and someone who knows a lot less. But the one who knows a lot less is a lot more popular. Yeah? And the one who knows a lot more gets really upset But the guy who knows a lot less is more popular. And maybe he says some wrong things, whatever he says. But does he say something good also? Yeah, he said, he says something good. Now what well, you could do, two, two things. You could say, hey, mashallah, you're popular, you're reaching a lot of people. Here are some mistakes you're making. Let me help you with them privately. Because you care about this person and the good that they do. But is that what we do? Let me now, because I'm less popular, let me now announce to the world how wrong this person is and highlight all of the wrong that they do and then tell people, yeah, there's some good things, mashallah, but you know what? Those good things don't count for anything because look at all these wrongs. Look at all these mistakes. They cannot stand that something good might come from someone else. You can't. What is, you know, our, our religion has very simple principles. If I have a problem with someone, what should I do? Talk about them or talk to them? Talk to them. Our religion is very simple principles. Hide the faults of your brother and sister or broadcast the faults of your brother and sister. What is it? Man satara mu'minan satara Allah yawm al-qiyamah Whoever covers their, the, a believer, Allah covers them on judgment day. A lot of our Islamic content now is dedicated to one person destroying another person. Yes or no? My question is, that person who wanted to destroy that other person couldn't email them couldn't find their phone number, couldn't go to their masjid, couldn't go to their, didn't have a conversation with them, couldn't sit and talk, they couldn't do that. They had to go to the world first and say what a kafir they are first. That's what, that was step one. This is what I don't understand. There's one thing that you, you know, at least you talk to the person. You talk to, you have a conversation with them. You know? And even on top of that, my, my, my own theory, you don't have to agree with this. Human beings will always disagree with each other. And no human being will ever be perfect. You could spend your energy descri describing how wrong someone else is, or you could spend your energy showing, doing something right. You, could, you, you decide where you want to put your energy. You know? some, people, some people's entire religion just becomes correcting somebody else, knocking somebody else down. Right? And if some, somebody else is actually doing something really terrible, or it's a very wrong idea that they're spreading, you know what? Ideas should be attacked. The Qur'an teaches us to attack ideas. Instead of attacking what? 
people. We become obsessed with attacking people instead of ideas. Now the thing is, when you attack a person, that person is made up of good ideas and bad ideas. When you attack that person, you have re refuted everything. But if you attack ideas, then you are making everyone move up. You're helping each other. But this, this is not what they did. They don't like that good would come to somebody else. Uh, there's one last one. Adhan has also been given. They started believing nobody will enter Jannah except us. These are their wishful thoughts. How to burhanakum? Bring your proof. Also, bring your proof. Is there any ayah in the Quran that says nobody will enter Jannah except you people? Did Allah give us a guarantee that you and I are going to enter Jannah? No. He says, Ku and Fusakum wa adikum nara. Save yourselves and your families from the fire. He says, Ya ayu and Latina Amanu, Ku and Fusakum wa adikum nara. He didn't say, Ya ayu and Latina Kafaru, Ku and Fusakum wa adikum nara. He said, Those of you who believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire. Wait. No, no, no. We're, we're believers. We're already safe. This should be said to those who don't believe. The rest of you, save yourselves from the fire because we are already on the safe side. No, he says, those of you who believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire. What does that tell you? Believers don't have a false sense of security. And because they don't have that, they're not, they, don't, they don't have any mental energy to decide who is and isn't going to hell. They don't have energy for that because they've got to worry about themselves. They've got to worry about them. How many people come to me and say, what's going to happen to Mother Teresa? Is that your concern on Judgment Day, bro? Like, honestly, when, when, when we rise and you see the sun and the moon colliding with each other and the oceans boiling, you're like, where's Mother Teresa? <laughs> <laughs> well, are you honestly going to be the day on which a mother will drop her baby? The day on which a person will run from their own family? You're like, but I have a good co-worker. I'm just worrying, wondering if they're going to go to hell or not. Why is this even your concern? Do you not believe in Allah the just? Do you not believe in Allah the knower of all things? Do you not believe in Allah who, who understands the inside and the outside? Why do you have to have an answer? And if I say, if I help you out and say, you know what, your coworker, nice guy, yeah, Allah will put him in Jannah. You, I'm not sure. Do you under, we're not even sure about ourselves, are we? Then why do you want guarantees for someone else? Where did this mentality come from? It came from, we're already saved. I want other people to join the saved group. This is self-righteousness. Don't declare yourselves pure. Don't declare yourselves saved. He knows better who has taqwa. They developed this mentality. And unfortunately, and we didn't even say, oh, Muslims are saved. We don't say that. We say, my version of Muslims are saved. My people, my mentor, my sheikh, my whoever, and the people that wear the same uniform as me, we're the saved ones. Everybody else, you know, they're just barbecue. <laughs> these, this is, what, why did I go through all of these ayat? Allah said what? Those who were given the burden of the Torah and they didn't carry it. They took the religion and made it into something else. This is not what Allah gave. They turned it into a different religion altogether. And Allah says, this is, this, I'm giving you this example because now you have been privileged. Don't make these mistakes. And if we have been making these mistakes, enough of us, not all of us, but enough of us have been making these mistakes, now it's time we put a stop to it. Now it's time we, we, you know, we have to study the Israelites as we are studying ourselves, actually. You know what in medical school they do, right? They study the cadaver, the dead body, because they're actually studying the future patient. We're studying the Israelites not to study the Israelites. We're studying them to study ourselves, to learn. That's, that's what Quran is. Quran is guidance for us, not fun facts from history. So as I leave you, one of the, this is not where it gets things re get really cool. I'll tell you at the end of, uh, after the prayer, but one of the things I will share with you, the example given was of a donkey that carries a burden. Check this out. One of the sages of the school of Eliyahu taught, this is Jewish literature, right, rabbinical literature. Uh, this is the Babylonian Talmud. Um, a person should always make himself subjugated to matters of the Torah like an ox to a yoke and like a donkey to a burden. 
So the Torah actually said, you should be committed to the book like a donkey is committed to the burden on it. So they use this analogy to say, this demonstrates how committed you should be to the book of Allah. Allah took that image and reversed it and said, yes, the analogy is true, but you actually became someone who has no idea what it's carrying, like a donkey carrying a bunch of books. The analogy is actually not originally Qur'an, the analogy is actually taken from rabbinical literature and being re re-engineered to make this point. So how <laughs> Okay, and then we'll we'll dis discuss more of this after the salah. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Here's what's coming up in the next episode and this deeper look of Surah Al Jumu'ah. So the donkey that was trying to get rid of its burden ended up carrying even more, which is an interesting analogy because the Israelites they tried to play with the word of Allah, and the more they tried to play with it, life became more and more difficult for them. More complications came in their life. Obeying the word of Allah makes life easy. Disobeying the word of Allah makes life difficult. That is the Qur'an's formula. It's always been there since the beginning.